Oh man, I got too drunk. Whoops. Let's try to pretend like I'm sober. Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. So I'm almost ready to start siding my tiny house. Uh, I just have a few more pieces of trim to put on. Uh, I need to put the corners on. I'm going to be putting it on there. I feel like that's going to give it a better finished look and it's going to kind of make the siding pop a little bit more with the, uh, the siding being almost the same color as my windows. I feel it'll make it pop if I have a nice white trim on these corners. So I'm going to be using that same PVC trim on the corners. And then this right here, this whole back side of my house is going to be my ugly side of my house. I'm going to have my air conditioning unit back here, propane tanks. Uh, I have to mount several things on here for the AC unit and for the propane. So I need to install some blocks, uh, basically the same stuff, that white PVC. I'm just going to join, you know, whatever I need together with some pocket holes and I'll make a block and then I can drill holes into these pieces and have whatever I need to go into the house, have it go in. So it'll be a nice finished look. Uh, up top, I'm gonna have two air vents that come out right there, one for the bathroom vent and then one for the dryer. So I need to put a block up there. So let's get started installing the trim. So the first thing I did was I made these pieces. I was gonna originally do one by six, but um, since my windows are really close to that corner, a one by six wouldn't have looked as nice. So I'm gonna just use that same one by four. I only need about eight pieces to do this. This just happens to be less than 12 feet, so it's perfect. So those only need eight pieces. I got four so far, but I need another hundred bucks. Please help me, I'm poor. So what I did is I cut one piece at that 7.16 degree. And this is gonna run into the bottom of the rake edge right there. And then I'll place another one on that like this. This exposed edge is not gonna have that wood grain. It'll be all right looking, I'll, I'll deal with that. So what I'm gonna do is go up there and figure out where these pieces go. I'll clamp them together and then I can get this measurement. And then I can go back to the shop and basically make this corner as well as that opposite corner. And then I'll go up to that top section and I'll do the same thing. I will butt this piece into it and then put this on this side and figure out where it goes there. Once I've established this difference right here, I can basically measure from my fascia trim, which is that flat piece uh, where the roof connects into it, measure from that fascia all the way down to the bottom of my trailer, get that length, and I can manufacture all these corners in, uh, in the shop. Oh, I'm drunk. Oh, the camera's not gonna catch me when I hit the ground. That's, that's the fucking bit I want. Oh God, I'm really gonna fall. Just get down so it's not as far when you fall. So I'm just gonna push these two pieces up into the fascia as well as uh, this thing. I can't remember what it's called, but this is a rake. That, that piece of trim has a thing, a name for it, but I can't remember what it's called. I'm gonna make sure the angle's good. I'm a little bit open on the, the long point. So I'll taper that back a little bit, make that angle better. And this sits perfectly flush with that, so that is beautiful. So now I can take this down. Now I'm just gonna measure this right here. This difference is three quarters of an inch. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you could have the trim go like this or like this. Uh, since, since I have a big piece of metal getting mounted onto the back of this, which you've probably seen the, for the uh, split mini and the propane tanks, uh, I wanna have more of a surface to mount that onto because I forgot exactly what the dimension was on that. So I'm gonna be doing my trim like this, but you could do it either way. Oh, that sucks dick. Nothing little cock ain't gonna fix, you know? So I've got the difference of that farther corner, so I can just measure that, which is an inch and an eighth. So I will write down three quarters for the back, and then uh, an inch and one eighth for the front. Why are we calling that the front? So now I'm just gonna butt into that fascia trim. Hopefully, hopefully we can do this. We can do it, we got it. You fucking So I want this to run a little bit long off the bottom. My, my siding's gonna hang down, uh, probably like an eighth or a quarter. So I have exactly 10 foot six and three, no, 10 foot six and a quarter. So let's do like 10 foot six and three eighths. So I got all the numbers I need. I am going to go and manufacture these corners in the shop. I'm gonna do pocket holes in the back so that this joint doesn't open up over time. I'm gonna glue it and then I'll bring out finished corners, put them on and I can nail it. So I thought these were 12 foot pieces, which would have made this project so much better. It would have been like great. I really thought they were 12 footers, but they are 10 foot eighth inch. That sucks and it screws this whole thing up. 
So basically now I'm going to have to have a joint in this thing. And it really pisses me off. It really does. So luckily I have a shit ton of cutoffs. So I'm going to square up this end, square up this end, do pocket holes, join them together so I can get a longer piece and then I'll cut it to length. Pocket holes. Do just a little bit of glue and screw. Now sometimes when people do trim, um, you do a like 45 cut or a 22 and a half degree and then you join it together. Uh, personally, I don't think that is the best way of doing trim because I, I think that's called a weather cut or something like that. But personally, I wouldn't do it. I would just butt joint stuff together because when you do that angled cut and you join two pieces together, it's because it's cut on an angle like that, that outside edge is really thin. So over time, it ends up like wearing off and coming back a little bit. And uh, I'm just not a fan of doing it that way. I can't cut this in here because it's too fucking long. Son of a bitch. I needed a break anyways. It's, it's way too hot to be working. Way too hot. This PVC trim I'm using is from Royal Trim Boards. If you were wondering, I would probably be still doing this professionally if I worked in a climate controlled environment. That was the worst part of the job was dealing with the heat, humidity, the cold. Cold really didn't bother me that much compared to the heat. Heat will freaking suck your life right out of you. So I've done trim on tons of houses and uh, generally we'll just put the boards together and nail them together. I'm going to pocket hole this. It's going to hold it together. It's going to be, in the long run, it's going to be a better thing to do because it's going to, it won't let the joint fall apart. And again, I'm not ripping this on a 45 and butting them together like that. I'm all right with that, a little bit of that exposed edge. Another thing I like about this pocket hole jig is that these dimensions are standard inch and a half. So you just take a block and you can put it out on your out feed table basically, and it'll set it up so that this piece is sitting flat on there. So it's a, another excellent design feature. So I'm gonna glue this joining edge. Again, overkill, probably not really needed, but why not? So this is where my angle cut is. I'm gonna make sure it's set in the right direction or orientation. And then I'm gonna measure that difference that I had at the beginning or when we first started this video. Remember, it was like an inch and an eighth. And then I'll take my clamp, clamp these together, screw it together. I'm gonna make, my, make sure my joint is still tight. Since I was kind of manhandling this thing, it kind of loosened up. So I'm going to push it together, make sure I'm tight down, clamp it, screw it. Now I staggered those two joints. This piece has a joint right here, this one here, so it's about a foot apart. So now I'm going to cut this thing to length. I'm going to hook on to the part that I measured into, the fascia. And then uh, I already figured out my, my overhang, that inch and an eighth that it hangs over. So. I don't need to measure twice for this piece. I can just do it once. So it's 11 foot six and a half. Well, we got lucky. This is a $50 piece of wood right here. What's the most expensive piece of wood I've ever cut? Like $5,000. It was a paralam, an engineered piece of lumber. The thing was huge. It was a radius. It was... So this is ready to get installed. I got to make four of them, obviously. I've already done one. This is number two. I need to go and buy four more pieces. I just, just wasn't rich when I went to the big box store the other day and I only got two. That's okay though. So I have my pre-made corner. Now I did go back and forth to the shop a couple times to get that to fit absolutely perfect or close enough for me. Uh, I'm not gonna put any silicone behind this. I'm going to, when I do my siding, I'll put a little bead of silicone right next to that and I'll butt my shingle into it. So I'm gonna make sure I'm tight all the way around there. That is beautiful. I'm very pleased with those joints. Oh yeah, baby. That worked out nicely. Make sure this is flush. This joint's good. I'm tight here, I'm tight here. So that means I should be running square. I would think, right? You would think. I am using two inch galvanized nails and I wanna put them maybe every foot I don't know we'll see so while I work my way down I'm gonna make sure that I'm tight on this inside corner if I'm tight on both then I should be running pretty good with the squareness that is beautiful already looks sharper doesn't it 
I think it does. I think it looks good. I'm happy. Happy, happy, happy. So I'm gonna go put the other corner on the other side, which I already have made. The other two I still gotta wait, but I'll do that later. Uh, I gotta wait for payday. Uh, and then I'm also gonna set up the blocks, which we'll jump to right now. I also went to big box store today. I walked out of there with with spending under forty dollars. That's that's amazing. If you go to that store, you'll be amazed. But I got this thing, which will be part of the air conditioner. It's a power shutoff, so if you need to service the AC unit, you take that out, and it will uh, cut the power to it. This was only like thirteen dollars. They say it's exterior grade, but I don't know how much I trust it. But that's got to get mounted onto a block. And I got some flexible electrical hose to run the wire from the box to the unit, as well as some fittings to connect it into both. That was a dollar a foot, and these ends were about two bucks. I got two electrical fuses that go inside that box. You only need one, but that box will allow two things to come off of it. So that's good. I, I got an extra fuse. And another thing that I've been thinking about is my, uh, my water, my rain catchment. Um, I need to build this huge massive unit that collects the water. It has a place for overflow to come out of it. It has another place where the dirty water or like the first part of the rain will go into and then I can drain it from there. So I'm going to mount that on the back of the house right here. This is going to be the ugly side of the house. There's just going to be, it'll be kind of a piece of artwork when it's done because there's just going to be so much crap in it. Hopefully it looks good when it's done, but I doubt it will. It definitely won't be the show side of the house at all. So there's gonna be a bunch of PVC pipe on this wall. And instead of having the fill spout on the side of the house like I do right now, I'm going to cut a hole right here, um, splice into that pipe, take this out, connect these into it, and have that fill that comes out on the side, have it come out on the back here. I get a lot of questions about my rain catchment system that I have. Uh, I have not finished hooking it up. I still need to put the gutter on and then do this whole setup thing here. So I've been filling it with a garden hose. My landlords are on a well, so I've got 200 feet of hose that I just run and I fill it up basically every week and a half, two weeks, depends on uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Also, I never drink that water. That is, that is strictly for showering, washing dishes, and maybe brushing my teeth. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, because I might brush my teeth. No, I use it for brushing my teeth. When I do fill the tanks, when they're all the way down, pretty much almost to the point where they're empty, I'll do a cap full of bleach. Just maybe like, not even a cap full, maybe like seven or eight drops of bleach mixed with the 200 gallons of water. Is that right? Yeah, 200 approximately. Like I said earlier, I don't want this coming out over here anymore. I want it coming out the back. So I've got these two 45s. I'm going to splice that in there and splice this in here. And then I've got a T that I'm going to hook up here and other things are going to happen in the future. But right now all I want is this pipe coming straight out and then I can figure out what I'm going to do, do with the rest of this stuff. So I need to cut this pipe. And this pipe is directly next to my water tank that I'm not allowed to cut. There's not, not allowed to cut that. You will go to jail if you cut that. Yeah, that'll, that'll give me a little protection. Golly, if I cut into that tank, I will cry like a little baby. So I'm gonna take my 45 and put it, you know, roughly where I want it to go. Now this edge right here is where this needs to get cut. So I already put a mark right there. So I'm gonna do my best to cut this as square as possible. I'll probably end up with a really nasty joint, but it'll be all right, hopefully, I think. I'm not a fan of this. It's going to do one of those boom. There's the boom. Didn't want the boom. The boom happened though. Oh, another comment that I get all the time about this is that it'll create a siphon and it's going to drain my tanks. It's not. I don't, I don't know. I'm amazed that some people know what the siphon is and they don't know how it works because there's no way once once it hits that certain point, it's going to suck air and the siphon's going to be broken. So the water tanks will only get to basically this level, right where the pipe's at. 
there could be a siphon, but it's only going to go to where this pipe's at. And then, then the air is going to get in there and the siphon's going to be broken. So no siphon is possible with this setup, even though everyone thinks it is going to happen. It's not. It's not. Calm down. So I glued that 90 up to it, and then I have this pipe that's coming out. Now I did some calculations. I wanted to make sure that this pipe will allow me to still have a three and a half inch, four inch, I forget exactly what this was, but I want this to be able to be off the wall uh, an inch and a quarter basically. So I made sure I did my, my math. That might be a little long, but that's all right. I can always trim it back. And then I went and packed in insulation into that back there, packed this thing full of insulation. Should be, should be all right. So I got that circle cut out. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Oh, not really. Maybe we can get it. There it is. So I took some of the galvanized nails off of a coil. I'm just gonna break those free and use those to uh, nail this plywood in. So that is good. I'm gonna tie back over this now and then we'll work on the block, I guess. So for this one that I'm working on right now, the, the two inch pipe that's coming out, uh, I think if I just go with this, a double, double wide basically, whatever this equals, so three and a half plus three and a half is eight inches. No, that's wrong, seven inches. So what I'm gonna do is cut two blocks at seven inches and then I'll join these together and then I can get my hole right in the center of that. And I, I figure that'll be all right. Now that big contraption that I'm gonna do for the rain catchment, I'm gonna have to do more of these blocks to, to secure that piping to the wall. Um, I'll, might be something that I do after, or I might get all the pieces that I need, assemble it, and then glue it all together except for where it connects into the pipe. Then I can figure out what I need to do to fasten those pipes to the wall. Once I've sided that whole side of the house, then I can go and just glue that last fitting up together and I'll have the blocks in the right spot. Still trying to figure out how to do that. I'm thinking of doing a flat block on the wall like like this and then taking maybe buying one uh, one by six and it'll get fastened onto it like this and then I'll do a hole in the center. I'll rip it and I'll do screws to connect it if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't but eventually it will make sense. So right now I'm just going to cut two blocks at a seven inches, I think. I should probably measure. So I'm going to join the back of these together with pocket holes. Now since I'm going to be putting a two inch hole right here, basically, uh, I want those pocket screws to be at the top and the bottom, probably within an inch of that. So I will very carefully figure out where that is. You're still, you still got to buy no screws. You're going to run out. One day you're going to go and be like, oh, so I'm going to glue and screw this together. I'm really just putting the glue on the back side of that piece so the squeeze out will be minimal. Now since these don't line up perfectly I'm just going to run it through the saw and I'm just going to take off a hair. So now I just need to find the center of this which that's easy that way and then three and a half this way. So this is a two inch coupler so it fits right inside that two inch pipe that I have. So if I put this right over that center I can trace the inside of it and I will have my uh, my mark and then I can use my jigsaw and a drill and knock that center out. I'm going to do my best by eye here. So now that I got that cut out I just need to cut a piece of drip cap. So that, look at that, it's like I made a birdhouse or something. That's perfect. Boom. So let's go put that in. Not really though because I got to fix that hole because the hole sucked. But you know I pretend like I'm good at what I do but I'm not. Just a fake show I'm putting on here. Fuck me. I'm just gonna test it, make sure it is good. It looks freaking beautiful to me. So I'm gonna put a healthy dose of cock right back here. And I might as well put a little bit right back here as well. I'm all right with some squeeze out on this. You could put a level on this, but you know my opinions on levels. So there's no real way to figure this out. But this is running plumb, right? So if I take my framing square and I put it against that and bring it down to it, you can see, just push it until it's good. That's running perfect with that, eh? That's a pretty good idea, don't you think? I think so. 
All right, what am I gonna hit? Nothing, right? Nothing, right? Nothing, right? God can only hope. Silicone in this top right here. I'll take my drip cap. I want that squeeze out up top. That is beautiful. Smooth the silicone out. Pop that in there. It looks good, does it? Not? I think it looks good. Looks good from here. So like I've said, I got plenty more of those blocks to do, but I'm just gonna repeat the same process that I did there. If I need one wider, then I'll do three boards together. Uh, I'm gonna do the drip cap like that. And uh, it's just gonna give it a real nice clean finish once uh, the siding goes on there. It's really gonna look nice, I think. I'm just gonna do that on this side. This will be the first side that gets the, the siding. So then I can mount my, my bracket that holds my mini split. So I can get some AC inside. So when I start working inside, it'll be nice and comfortable. So I guess that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you wanna help support something, I don't know, See, the problem is with that tiny house trailer, there's, there's issues with that thing. So plans might be changing with uh, Tiny House Terry 2.0. In my head, they've changed, but I haven't spoken with my, uh, my shareholders. So I'm going to go film that and get their feedback on it. But uh, I do have a Patreon page. All my videos are released onto Patreon about six weeks before they're actually released onto YouTube. And then there's also behind the scenes type videos or just for you videos, stuff that never made it onto YouTube. I've got probably 15 videos up there right now. Yeah, if you want to uh, see some of that stuff for just $1 a month, you'll get, you'll get access to it. Don't forget to leave your great knowledge down below and hit that thumbs up if you felt this video was helpful. And as always, I will see you on the next video. Peanut, were you even in this video? It's too hot to be in the videos. For those of you dying to know what's going to happen with this water thing, um, I'm going to come out with a 90 degree like this, and I'm going to connect into this T right here. I haven't figured out which way I'm going to put it yet, but it's going to go basically like this. This pipe's going to go down to a drain. So when water, rainwater comes down into the pipe, it's going to fill this pipe down at the bottom first. And it's going to have all the crap that shouldn't have gone down the pipe. Uh, I have several different screens that it hits before it goes into my tanks. And this will be the last thing that, you know, the heavies are just going to fall to the bottom of this pipe. And I'll have a screw valve that you open up and it drains it out. But when it's raining, it'll fill that up. The heavies will fall and then it'll fill up the tanks after it's filled up that pipe. Now I'll need to drain that after every rain. So, and then for the top here, um, I'm thinking I'm going to tee off of it again. I'm going to do a, a stack pipe, basically, uh, a large pipe that the gutter is going to feed into. And then I'm going to do a smaller pipe as a vent, as well as a, a fill valve right there. You know, it'll probably only come up to about here so I can put the hose in it. If I need to fill the tanks, I can do it manually like that. Uh, eventually I'd like to be somewhere where there's running water and if I can hook up some type of ram pump on my property and use that water for showering and uh, doing laundry that would be great but that's my plan for that I got, I got a lot of figuring to do over here